Batman number two, written by Scott Snyder, art by Greg Capullo, where we last left off. Batman has a John Doe, there's a threat against Bruce Wayne written on the wall, and the prime suspect is Nightwing, because his DNA is at the scene. We pick up this issue, once again talking about the city of Gotham. Get used to that, it is a running theme for the entirety of this run. Uh, Bruce is talking about Wayne Tower, how his great-grandfather built it with 12 gargoyles to welcome in people into the city. And most importantly, an observation deck that was open to everybody like on the weekends for free, and it has super unbreakable glass. And then we see Bruce Wayne crashing through it. But hey, how do we get here? Let's go back. 24 hours earlier, some people are in a helicopter. They just stole a bunch of, I think, statues. Um, and Batman's chasing after them. They're barely managing to escape. And then somehow Batman manages to catch them on a motorcycle. They're in a helicopter, and he, anyway, he grabs one of them, drags him out the window. They end up trying to shake Batman by lowering down on some train tracks where there is a train, but Batman jumps his motorcycle on top of the train, flips it around, and then uses it to ramp into the windshield of the helicopter. Just to look badass, literally. Like, he even does the smirk where he's like, this is going to be awesome. So, he crashes in. Uh, Alfred's over the phone. He's like, oh, Commissioner Gordon's ready for you at the morgue. And he's like, all right, I'll be there. And Alfred's like, uh, you're on the other side of town, sir. And he's like, I'll be there, Alfred. Chill. So we get into the morgue. Commissioner's talking to the coroner. And he's like, yeah, this guy died because of a hemorrhage in his throat. Like, he, when his throat was slit. But he was tortured pretty heavily before that. So I can't really make heads or tails of it. Commissioner's like, all right, well, thanks. I'll, I'll, I just want to, you know, be here for a little bit afterwards for nothing weird at all. Um, so then Batman... Batman, you, he talks to Gordon, but he's not there. It turns out he had hologram scanners installed at the morgue, so he can just scan the body and examine it while he's in the Batcave. So he's looking at the body, and he manages to make a few deductions. Uh, he, because of the scarring and the location of it and the severity of it, he figures that this dude was a trainer for some really hardcore stuff, like hard sword, fu sword fighting and, like, not even boxing, just fighting. Um, and he's picking up something in one of his teeth. So Gordon pulls it, and there is an emblem of an owl inside. And it's an Athenian owl, which is a symbol of wealth and power, apparently. But Gordon makes the reference of an old Gotham myth, which I'm just going to read the little fairy tale rhyme here straight up, so I never have to read it again. Beware the court of owls that watches all the time, ruling Gotham from shadowed perch beyond granite and lime. They watch you at your hearth, they watch you in your bed, speak not a word whispered of them, or they'll send a talon for your head. It's the court of owls, that's the thing. It's, the, it's literally the name of the arc. So Batman's like, that's just a myth, they don't exist. And he's like, well, you didn't exist for a while. So and he's like, trust me, Gordon, they don't exist. I'm Batman, goddammit. So... Gordon asks if he's following up on any leads he has, and he's like, I will as soon as I have one. Meanwhile, the lead walks in, Nightwing, and he's like, hey, you want to talk to me? And he's like, yeah, this John Doe. What do you know about him? And Dick explains that he was at some event or something like that, and the dude came up to him, and he was like, hey, they're real, they're terrible, and they're coming for you. And as he's being dragged off by security away from Dick Grayson, he gets, you know, scratches of Dick's arm, which is why his DNA was at the crime scene. And Batman's like, all right, that makes sense. You're clear. And he's like, all right, cool. So uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? Because apparently it's Bruce Wayne's last day alive. So he goes, Bruce goes to Old Wayne Tower, where we talked about at the beginning, uh, to speak with Lincoln March about his mayoral campaign. And Bruce is like, all right, yeah, no, I like what you're doing. How much do I got to write you for a check? And Lincoln March is like, hey, I don't. I'm not here for your money. I will. You can sign that, though, to Lincoln March. This, you know, but I really am here for your vote. And Bruce is like, you know, a lot of people would make that. That would sound like, you know, cynical would say that's a bit corrupt sounding. But um, Lincoln's like, well, I could say the same for you about your Gotham project. But anyway, they break down. They have a talk. Uh, Lincoln is apparently also an orphan, much like Batman. He lost his parents to a drunk driver. He doesn't remember pretty much anything about them now except for a small ceramic heart. It was like a little lopsided, and his, uh, Lincoln's mother wore it as a pin, and it was just lying there on the pavement as, you know, they were dead. And they talked for a bit, and it's like, Bruce, we can be good allies. We really need to work together for this city. 
By the way, something terrible and evil and ancient has come to Gotham. And Bruce is like, what are you? And in that moment, that evil ancient thing shows up, kills all the security guards around. It It's dressed like a giant owl. They don't give it a name. I'll give it a name. It's Talon, a Talon. And he, he shows up and he uses throwing knives to kill the security guards, like straight up. He wounds Lincoln March, hits him in the chest, and starts throwing some knives at Bruce. Uh, Bruce is like, all right. I don't know if anyone's watching, so I gotta land some lucky shots just in case. And then as he's trying to land what looks like lucky shots, the talent's just deflecting him. And he's like, alright, no more playtime. Gets the talent in chokehold, goes to break his windpipe. Talent's still alive, despite him putting on like t- 20 times the lethal force. And then as he's getting more and more knives in him, Talon's like, Bruce Wayne, the Court of Owls that sends you to die, kicks him out the window, and then dives after him. Bruce is doing some mental calculations of like, all right, I can't grab any of the gargoyles or else I'll have my arms ripped off, so how am I going to survive this? And the Talon makes the comment of how much he loves killing Waynes as he keeps on slashing at Bruce. Um, Bruce does end up grabbing onto a secret 13th gargoyle that nobody knows but him because he knows Gotham. And because he knows Gotham, he can say with certainty there is no such thing as the Court of Owls. As the Owl crashes onto a car beneath them and is picked up by EMTs. He's like, there's no such thing as the Court of Owls. As the Talon comes back to life in the back of the ambulance and kills the drivers and is now off to do some more murdering, I presume. End of issue. It's very good. I, it's very much standalone even. Like, yes, you need to know the whole backstory going into it of like, okay, someone set a death wish for Bruce Wayne, someone, yeah, who's Lincoln March and stuff like that. Obviously, you need to know that stuff. But, like, it, the cliffhanger in this wasn't even the cliffhanger of, like, oh, no, is Bruce Wayne going to survive this? It's like, no, we finished that. He's already there. We, the cliffhanger was done at the beginning. Um, and I really like that in comics. I really like when they're not, like, teasing you. They know their story is strong enough. They're not teasing you to keep them going into the next issue. Like, yes, it's a little cliffhanger of, oh, the talent's still alive. But that's just, he was going to be regardless whether they showed it or not. So I'm just, I'm happy they showed it that way. Um, all in all, I'm going to give this like an eight and a half. It's a very well done issue. The art is fantastic. Can't complain about Greg Capullo at all. My only real complaint is the the whole like statue thing at the beginning just feels a little bit like, okay, how does this relate to anything? But honestly, I'm okay with Batman just being a badass sometimes. Who isn't? So yeah, 8.5. Of course, I'm, I, I'm, I'm already loving this arc and I'm loving where they're going to go with it. So yeah. Batman, two thumbs up.